The heart and soul of the ServiceNow platform is the database. You can't really do anything without it. You can't even log in because you need to have a record in the user table in the database. In fact, just about everything you see or do in ServiceNow ultimately ties back to a record in a database table somewhere. In this video, we begin to build our understanding of the ServiceNow database. And we'll talk about the tables and the records and the users and the fields. And we'll poke around at some of the cool tables and database tools that the UI provides. Welcome to our newly updated ServiceNow Fundamental Series. Jeff here from ServiceNow Simple, where we help you understand the ins and outs of ServiceNow with a focus on keeping things as simple as possible. So some of the keywords to watch for in this video include relational database, tables, records, and fields, data type, primary key, sysid, reference fields, dictionary, and schema map. I appreciate you being part of the channel. Subscribe if you haven't already. Let's jump into it. Ah, the database. It's my favorite of all topics when talking about the ServiceNow platform, which is a cloud-based platform made up of a suite of business applications designed for solving all sorts of business problems and a development platform which allows you to create custom applications and workflows and the database, which to state it simply, just makes everything work. ServiceNow uses a relational database, which means that the data gets stored in tables as records and fields, and that relationships can be created between the tables, making it super efficient and eliminating the need to store the same data in multiple places. When we talk about tables in a database, what we're talking about is rows and columns of data, like picture a spreadsheet. So a table like this, not like this. Each row in the table is called a record, and each column in the table is called a field. And as a general rule, each database table should store data about only one thing or entity. So we keep things organized. There are no junk drawer database tables that just hold a bunch of miscellaneous stuff. Another important thing to know is that when we define the fields or columns in a database table, we have to specify the type of data that will be stored in that field. We call that the data type. The underlying database management system defines which data types we can choose from, and that makes this pretty simple. We'll look at all the data types available in the ServiceNow database in a bit, but as an example, a field for storing a name would probably be defined with a string data type allows storing a combination of letters and numbers and special characters. And a field storing a created date would probably have a date time data type. And a field storing a price would probably have some numeric data type like a decimal. Most database tables include a field that's used to uniquely identify each record. It's like an ID field. We call that a primary key. No two records in a given table will ever have the same value in that primary key field. They have to be unique and they don't change. In the ServiceNow database, that ID field is named SysID and every table has one. So every record that exists in every table in ServiceNow is uniquely identified by its SysID. And these SysIDs are super important because we use them to create relationships between tables via reference fields. A reference field is a sort of special type of field designed to store the sysid of a record in some other table. By doing that, we can join records from two different tables together to create super powerful relationships. If I have a table that stores data about users, for example, and another table that stores data about departments, I can create a reference field in the user table that refers to the department table. I can then populate that field in the user table with the sysid of a corresponding record in the department table. Now those two records are joined together and I can track which department each user belongs to without duplicating any data. And when I need to change something about a department, I can do that in the department table without touching the user record. And if a user switches departments, I can simply update the record in the user table 
replacing the value in the reference field with the new department's sysid. Normally, when you're working with a relational database and you need to run queries to pull data or make changes to the structure of the database, like add or remove tables and fields, you have to be set up with a user ID and password in the underlying relational database management system. With ServiceNow's database, things work a little differently. As a user or developer or administrator of a ServiceNow instance, you won't ever get direct access to the underlying database management system. The database is just too important to provide access at that level. Instead, what ServiceNow does is provide you with a set of special database tables called dictionary tables and some tools to run queries and make changes. This sounds nuts, but what these dictionary tables do is store data about the database itself. And with the appropriate roles, you can open list views and form views of these dictionary tables to learn all about the structure of the database and even make changes. It's pretty cool. Let's have a look. I'll start by clicking the All menu, navigating down to an application named System Definition. This application is where a lot of the modules reside for working with how the instance of ServiceNow is configured or set up. Sort of like lifting the hood on the platform and getting into the underlying parts that make it run. Naturally, not everyone has access to this application, but administrators and developers will likely find themselves coming here fairly often. I'm going to open the Tables module here. And this is your first look at one of ServiceNow's database dictionary tables. This is a list view displaying all of the records in the table table. Wait, what? You heard me right. There is a table in the database called table that stores a record for every table in the database. That's a dictionary table. It stores data about the database itself. And this is pretty cool. I can see right here that the database has a total of 5,151 tables. I can see the label and the name of each table. More on labels and names in just a minute. And I can see if the table extends another table or can be extended by other tables. More on extensions in the next video. As with any list view, I can add a filter to locate a particular table. Here's the record for the user table. Now, check this out. Again, as with any list view, I can click on the linked value from the first column to open the record in a form view to work with it in more detail. Let's open the record for the user table. Cool. Here's the name of the table and the label. And down here, in the Related Lists section, I can see a listing of all of the fields or columns that exist on the user table. I can see the field's names, the label, its data type, and additional attributes that describe each field. As with any list, I can add a filter to locate a particular record. I know there's an email field in the user table. There it is. It has a data type of email. That's interesting. Now check this out. Again, as with any list view, I can click on the linked value from the first column to open the record in a form view to work with it in more detail. Let's open the email field. Cool. Now I can see and potentially make changes to all sorts of attributes describing the email field of the user table. Wow, this is really powerful stuff. All made possible by an underlying set of tables in the database that describe the structure of the database itself, dictionary tables. Let me return to the list of tables to clear something up real quick. Notice here that every table has both a label and a name. You'll also notice that the same holds true for every field. Here's the deal. Every table or field that gets created in any database has to have a name. And that name can only include certain characters can't have any spaces, for example, and probably can't use some special characters or keywords. That name is what the underlying database management system uses to refer to that table or field. It's also what a developer would use to refer to it in code. And once a table or field is created, its name can't ever be changed. What ServiceNow does is also provide the ability to add an additional, more user-friendly, 
human readable label to a table or field. And it's the dictionary tables that make this possible. The label can include spaces and special characters, and you can change it down the road if you want to. And the label is what you'll see in the UI to refer to the table or field. So we have two ways to refer to a table or field, using the name, which is the more system level attribute, or using the label, which is more human level. Hmm. Let me show you a couple of other modules that are useful in learning about the structure of the database. I'll return to the system definition application. This time I'll select the dictionary module. That opens a list view for another dictionary table called the dictionary entry. This table stores a record for every database table and every field that exists in every database table. So it's a much longer list because each table can have lots of fields. My list currently includes 131,664 records. That would be the total number of tables plus the total number of all the fields that exist within those tables. Notice the first column here displays the name of the table. And the next two columns display the label and the name of the field or column within the table, followed by some additional attributes of the field. So this is super handy. Say I want to see all of the fields that exist in the user table. I can simply add a filter to only include the records where the table name equals sys underscore user. That's the name of the table, like this. And here's my list of fields. And if I have the appropriate roles, I can add fields by clicking the new button, populating the form. Or I can remove a field if I need to, or make changes. Let's look at one other module real quick. This time the system definition applications tables and columns module. This is a sort of special page that provides some additional tools for viewing the structure of the database and making some more advanced changes. This page displays a list of all the tables in the database. As you can see, it displays the table's label followed by the name in brackets. Let's scroll down and find the user table. And this is interesting. You can see we have two tables with the same label of user. We have imp user and we have sys user. That unfortunately is possible because the label doesn't have to be unique. I'm interested in the sys user table, so I'm going to click on it. Now you can see this is interactive. You can now see all of the fields that exist within the sys user table, and I can select a field to see all of its details. The email field, for example, is set to active. Here's its label, and here's its name. It's not read-only, so it can be edited, and its data type is email, and it doesn't have to be unique. So all this page is really doing is pulling data from those underlying dictionary tables and displaying it in a different manner. And if you like this view, go for it. Otherwise, if you prefer to just use the list views and form views, you can do that too. It's all the same data, remember. Pretty much everything you see in ServiceNow is just a record in a database table somewhere. So these dictionary tables make things sort of interesting in that when you look at a table in the database, you can view it from two different perspectives. The perspective of the data it's storing, or its records, or the perspective of how the table is structured. It's dictionary. Let's look at an example. I'll open a list view of the user table by traversing to the user administration application and selecting the users module. This is a listing of all of the records in the user table, so it's data. There are 624 user records. This is the data view. From any list view, if you have the appropriate roles, you can come down to the column options menu for any column, it doesn't matter which one you choose, and select the configure item and the table sub item. That opens a form that displays the structural view or the dictionary view for the table. Here's its label and name. And in the related list section, here are all the fields and their data types, and lots of other structural details. 
This is the structural or dictionary view of the table. And anytime you're viewing the table from this perspective, you can come down to the related link section and select the show list link. Now we're back to looking at the data. So we can bounce back and forth between viewing the data and viewing the design of the table that's storing the data. Let me go back to the dictionary of this table and show you another really useful database tool. I'll scroll down beneath the related lists section to the related links section again. This time, I'll click on the show schema map link. What the schema map does is show a graphical representation of the table and how it relates to other tables in the database. We're going to cover table extensions in the next video, so I'm going to uncheck these for the time being, and then I'm going to select the show referenced tables checkbox. We talked at the beginning of this video about reference fields and how they can be used to create relationships between tables. This shows me all of those tables that the user table has a reference relationship to. You can see, for example, that the user table refers to the department table to get the user's department information, and the company table to get the user's company information, and the cost center table to get the user's cost center information. You can click on the plus sign here to view the columns or fields that exist within each of these tables. So these are all of the other tables that the user table refers to. I can also include on the schema map all of the other tables that refer to the user table by clicking the show referencing fields checkbox here. That said, this is a horrible example because Almost all of the tables in the database include a reference to the user table. I'll go ahead and click this and show you what we get. And after some time, here's our schema map showing both incoming relationships and outgoing relationships to the user table. It's another great tool for learning about the structure and design of the database, and it's all made possible by those underlying dictionary tables. Okay, let's wrap up with a quick review. The ServiceNow database is the heart of the platform. It supports all of the system level data storage requirements as well as all of the data storage requirements for the business applications and all the workflows, both out of box and custom developed. And ServiceNow uses a relational database, which means that the data is stored in tables using records and fields. Relationships can be created between the tables using reference fields. To make the storage super efficient, and eliminate the need to duplicate any data. ServiceNow provides access to a set of special tables called dictionary tables that store data about the database itself. Two of those tables are the tables table, which is named sys underscore db underscore object, and that stores a record for every table in the database. And the dictionary entry table, named sys underscore dictionary, which stores a record for every table and every field in the database. And finally, a schema map is a page in the ServiceNow UI that displays a graphical representation of a table and all of its relationships to other tables. So there you have it, the ServiceNow database, part one. It's a great start, but there's much more to come in the next video where we'll talk about table extensions and database views and, drumroll please, we'll create our very own brand new custom database table. It's going to be awesome. Thanks for watching this one. I'll see you in the next one.